Hello there, students. Today we will be working on this problem. Please read along with me. Mr. Jones has a big sack of sugar that weighs 126 pounds. He wants to make small sacks of sugar weighing two-fifths of a pound each. How many small sacks can he make? So once again, our question, we're going to box it in. How many small sacks? can he make? So remember over here in our yellow box, it has our problem solving strategies to circle and underline important information, which we use the highlighter for, and to box in our question. Now to elaborate is to do something, a strategy that can help us understand or figure out the problem. So in this case, I would like to draw a picture just a simple picture. So let's say that I have, let's represent this big sack of sugar. And it has 126 pounds in it. But what I'm gonna do, or what Mr. Jones is gonna do, he's gonna take all the sugar in that big sack and he's gonna pour it into smaller sacks. And each sack is going to be exactly the same size of two-fifths of a pound. So what is he doing? He's regrouping the sugar. He's regrouping it into smaller amounts. Or in other words, he is dividing the sugar into smaller amounts. So we are dividing. And so let's go ahead and write that problem out. He has 126 pounds of sugar and he's dividing it by sacks that are two fifths of a pound each. So when we are going to divide, we're going by a fraction, we have to make sure that both of them are fractions. This is not a fraction yet. But we know how to turn it into a fraction. Do you remember? How do we turn a whole number into a fraction? Absolutely. We need to put it over one. By putting it over one, we do not change the value of this number. 126 over one means 126 divided by one, which is still 126. So we turned 126 into a fraction, but didn't change its value. Very important. So now we have this fraction represents 126 pounds and we have two fifths that represents the amount of each smaller sack. But let's look at our steps. When we are dividing fractions, we write mixed numbers as improper fractions. We already turned our whole number into an improper fraction. So now we want to multiply the dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor. Okay, so what does that mean? Multiply the dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor. So what that means is that even though we have decided that we are supposed to divide in this problem, we're going to have to multiply. But we're not going to multiply the numbers that we see in front of us. We're going to have to multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. So the first number that we see here in front, that is my dividend. And the number that we are dividing by, that is the divisor because it's doing the dividing. So we are going to keep the 126 over one, that is our dividend, keep it, but we're going to change to multiplication, we're going to multiply, but we are also going to do the reciprocal. And the reciprocal is the number that gets multiplied by two fifths to give me one. And so that's going to be the number is going to look flipped. So five will go to the top and two will go to the bottom. Does everybody see that? 5 over 2 is the reciprocal of 2 over 5. We flipped it. And the reason we did that is because 
we're on step two, multiplying the dividend by the reciprocal. So let's make sure that we mark that this is my reciprocal. This number is still the original number given. So now we are going to multiply across 126 times 5, and I might need a little bit of space for that. So I'll use my space up here. It's okay. I'm going to work out our problem. 6 times 5 is 30. Carry the 3. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 3 more is 13. Carry the 1. 1 times 5 is 5, plus 1 more is 6. So we get 630. See how we just multiplied right across? And now we're going to multiply the denominators right across. 1 times 2 is 2. So now we are on step 3. Simplify. Do you think we can simplify this fraction? Absolutely, yes, students. We have an improper fraction. So we have two choices. We can simplify by simplifying the fraction and finding a common number to divide both the numerator and the denominator, or we can simplify by dividing the numerator by the denominator to get this improper fraction simplified. Which one do you prefer to do today? That is a great idea. Let's go ahead and divide. So I'm going to divide the numerator divided by the denominator to get my simplified answer. So 2 goes into 6 3 times because 2 times 3 is 6. Bring down the 3. 2 goes into 3 1 time because 2 times 1 is 2. We'll have 1 left over and bring down our 0. 2 goes into 10 5 times. So we get 315 is our simplified answer. Let's look at our choices. Do we see 315 small sacks? That is correct. C would be our best answer.